Go to Cheryl Atkinson right. because she did this instant poll. And Cheryl, I know you, we had to rush through because the debate actually went long. Were there any other interesting uh, poll results that you can tell us about? Yeah, uh, we have some updated results. We have about 100 more. And by more. the way, Cheryl, yes. Cheryl, this yes. is your first appearance on a webcast. You can totally <laughs> chill and be relaxed okay. and have fun. And you don't have to be all uptight and okay. everything like we have to be on the news. Go ahead. Are you implying that I'm typically uptight? <laughs> no, I think we're all a little uptight on okay. the evening news. All right. <laughs> go ahead. Um, I want to go over the numbers we gave earlier because these are better updated numbers from about 500 of those uncommitted voters. First of all, which candidate do you think did the best job or won tonight's debate? 25% said McCain, many more. 39% said Obama, but a little more than a third of them saw it as a tie. We also asked, would the candidate make the right decisions about the war in Iraq? The reason the numbers you're going to see add up to more than 100 percent is because we asked the viewers about each candidate independently. So as far as McCain, he went up 16 points, 58 percent of them after this debate felt that McCain would make the right decisions about the war in Iraq. Um, Obama went up as well. He started out around 44, 45 percent. Post-debate, he's up 48 percent, not as much as Senator McCain, but both saw a rise. Do you think Barack Obama or John McCain, we asked, would make the right decisions about the economy? Again, we asked about each candidate independently. 44% thought McCain would. 66% thought that Obama would. After tonight's debate, we t asked them about their general opinion of Barack Obama. 46% uh, said it has gotten better and no change for about half as well. And finally, this is a new number we didn't have about a half hour ago. Is the candidate prepared for the job of president? As you can see there, these numbers are a little confusing just because there are four of them on the screen. We asked this question of, of about each candidate. Seventy-eight percent felt that John McCain is prepared for the job of president. That's about where he started out before the debate. But look what happened to Senator Obama's numbers. He's gone up from about 45 percent to 58 percent post-debate. So it looks like uh, John McCain did pretty well when he's talking about some issues with Iraq. Overall, on several of the questions we saw, it looks like um, Obama really had the edge with some of these uncommitted voters. Katie? Yeah, and how many, Cheryl, how many voters were, were polled uh, right after the debate or okay. before and after the debate? We have a pool of voters, so it depends on how many answer. And at first, about 400 had answered before the end of the last program, and we have about 500 now. So it's a pretty decent poll. And so these were all uncommitted voters, Cheryl? Yes, these are people uncommitted. Some of them say they may be leaning one way or the other, but felt that they're open-minded enough that they might change, and others said they hadn't made up their minds at all. So that's how they get into and, that pool. And were they asked a very simple question, like, were, what, did this debate change your mind, or did it make you commit to one candidate or another? Or? Let me see if somebody will tell me that in my ear. They asked about, I think, uh, 15 questions or so. Hold on. Yes? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is television at its finest, okay, ladies okay. and gentlemen. Thank so goodness it's on the web. Go we ahead. asked if their minds had been made up <laughs> post-debate, and I'm told that only about one in four of those uncommitted voters that started out not knowing has now made up his or her mind after the debate. So only one in four has made a different decision based on tonight. So that doesn't seem like a big change or it, it necessarily I mean, had a big impact. It did on yeah. certain areas, but not necessarily on their overall vote and, and who they're committed to. Well, it's always interesting to see that even though people may feel one or the other candidate did better on an issue or won a certain, maybe even won the debate, that doesn't necessarily translate into a vote that the people have changed their mind or will decide to vote for that candidate. Yeah, and I guess the, the upcoming debates are going to be really important, Cheryl, because I, I know that 64 percent of the people in a CBS News poll said that they were very interested in all these debates, and a lot of people are really going to be interested in St. Louis on Thursday. Meet me in St. Louis, everybody, because that's when Governor Sarah Palin and Senator Joe Biden will be face-to-face, -face, and I think that will be really a very fascinating encounter at Washington University, and again, that's next Thursday. Hey, you guys, before we go, did Dan Bartley come back? What, what up with that? Can we see a shot of his empty chair? Oh, we don't even have the shot. This is pathetic. Anyway, uh, well, I think that... Yes, uh, 
I'll bring this to a close. And I just want to thank everybody out there for their questions. You know, we got more tonight than usual. We got over 2,000 questions. We're going to try to get to many more of them, hopefully next Thursday during the vice presidential debates. We're still working out the kinks in the system so we can get your questions immediately, almost in real time, and then ask our experts uh, who we, we've gathered here for our debate coverage.